I saw you interviewed uh, Joe Rogan's father. Do you still have beef with Rogan? I start heckling him. Eventually, he lets me on. He starts talking mad about numerology and astrology. I went in his ear. I'm like, don't worry, brother. I'll be back to see you. And as soon as I heard that Joe Rogan's dad had beef with him, I went right down there and interviewed him. Again, <laughs> people have to be very careful who they f with in society. back guys we don't have on guests two times often but this guy was so good last time i brought him back gary the numbers guy how's it going i'm doing good man i'm like in vegas vegas is a snake city i'm born in the snake year this is my type of vibe man it's good to see you um what's been the latest with numerology and astrology well it's always the same thing man you know when it comes down to it, if you understand how the energies work life gets easier hmm. and the thing is in 2023 which adds up to a seven two two three seven a lot of people are picking up on this. Mm. You've probably seen posts on IG. You've probably seen posts on TikTok or whatever more toward this type of content because under seven energy, people are more interested in intellectual things. Mm. Uh, next year is going to be 2024, which is an eight. People can go back to wanting that bag. Mm. Anything to do with business, that's going to accelerate next year. But as for this year, it's spirituality, numerology, astrology, all sorts of things like that. Wow, so you're able to predict recessions using numerology. Well, you, you can predict what people's, um, uh, what they're gonna be interested in based off the energy that the earth is spinning around. Mm. So for instance, uh, does it mean that everyone in the world's gonna pick up on it? No, where this is a percentage game. Yeah. So for instance, if 5% uh, of the world was interested in 2022, I would say about 21, 22, 23% of the world. You see posts now of people saying, yo, you know, it's from the so-called alpha male red pill guys. Yeah. All of a sudden they're having posts. Yo, this numerology and astrology stuff is real. <laughs> and, and you saw it coming. Yeah. You saw it coming. And next year it's going to be about finances. Next year it's going to be more about the Bitcoin, more about the um, like crypto, because people are going to be super focused on finances. Yeah. And then 2025 hits, we'll go back to the spirituality realm. What do you think about crypto overall? Because it's down pretty bad right now. Do you see it coming back? Uh, well, people can go uh, to my tweets on my Twitter account, find GG33. And I told all my people to get out December uh, 2021. Why? Okay. Um, if you use Ethereum, if you use uh, USDC, what are the two first letters? E-T-H? No, Ox. All the addresses where you send money. Oh, oh yeah. Ox, right? Ox, yeah. O-X. So here's the thing. Uh, they actually told you when the peak of crypto was going to be. See, these people always tell you things and hidden in plain sight. Now, I only told my people this in 2021 and mm -hmm. 2022, but now I can tell everyone because now you can see how it works. Um, 2021, when crypto peaked, was the year of the ox. Mm. So they actually told people through the addresses of the, that's only one animal sign of all the animal signs. Mm -hmm. It was only ox. So I interpreted that that 2021 would be the peak. And I used to make tweets like, yeah, you, th you guys think crypto is easy now. Wait till 2022. So, yes, I do think there's going to be another run. Mm -hmm. But it's I think 90 percent of these cryptos, 95 are going to go bust very soon. Scary. Yeah, I'm down bad right now, but I'm holding off. I wish I knew you in 21. Uh, <laughs> you can Ethereum, I think, is here to stay, because okay. if you look at Ethereum, um, it has a pyramid as, at its logo. Um, you know, the logo is the Ethereum pyramid. Yeah. And to me, that's a sign that, you know, they're connected to the higher powers because they're paying homage. You have to understand when, when, if you look in society, some things don't make sense, but pe people in positions of power have to pay homage to their masters. Mm. Example, 13 is the 13 bloodline families. I don't think this is anything new. People have heard 13 bloodline families, Rothschilds, Rockefellers. You heard about that. Yeah, yeah. But there, the ways that they pay homage to these people in society is very hidden in plain sight. For instance, McDonald's, Big M, right? Marathon gas station, Big M. Why do they signify the M? Because M is the 13th letter of the alphabet. So they're paying homage to the 13 families in hidden ways. Now, if you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, they were called the team the 76ers because of what happened in 1776. That's the logical thinking. Mm -hmm. But they don't call them the 1776ers. They call them the 76ers. What's seven plus six? 
Uh, 13. There you go. <laughs> the San Francisco 49ers. They're going to tell you, oh, it's because of the 1840. Shout out to Policy Genius, today's sponsor. The holidays not only allow us to spend time with family, but they are a reminder of how important our responsibility is to protect them. That includes planning to secure their future. Life insurance is an easy way to give your family peace of mind, provides a safety net. So if something were to happen to you, your family can cover expenses while getting back on their feet. Luckily, Policy Genius can help you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts are on hand to talk you through it. You never know when you'll need life insurance. I've lost some loved ones over the past few years, and unfortunately, none of them had life insurance. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Even if you already have a policy through work, it may not offer enough protection. So check out Policy Genius. Your family deserves peace of mind. Head to policygenius.com slash DSH or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash DSH. 49 gold rush. But again, it's not 18 49ers. It's 49ers. Four and nine again is 13. So they do things like this hidden in plain sight. Go back to one of my favorite movies of all time, Any Given Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's always number 33 to number 13. Mm. <laughs> those that's the running back and the wide receiver in the movie. Do those numbers get along? For the most part, yes. Nice. I saw you interviewed uh, Joe Rogan's father. Do you still have beef with Rogan? I mean, listen, um, I was on stage. I I'll, I'll tell you a unique story. It was 2019. I bet a friend of mine that I could get on stage with Joe Rogan during his comedy show. Yeah. So he's like, okay, bet. So I took $5,000. And I threw it on stage because I know no one in their right mind is crazy enough to throw $5,000 on stage to a comic. I knew that get his attention. All of a sudden, he's like, whoa, what's this? So I started heckling him. Eventually, he lets me on. He starts talking mad about numerology and astrology. I went in his ear. I'm like, don't worry, brother. I'll be back to see you. And as soon as I heard that Joe Rogan's dad had beef with him, I went right down there and interviewed him. <laughs> <laughs> right down there and interviewed him. So again... People have to be very careful who they f with in society because you ne never know how petty someone is. Yeah. Why do they have beef with each other? Um, Joe Rogan's mom took Joe away from his dad when he was five, six years old and moved him out to California. Mm. He's had no contact with his father since. And then all of a sudden he starts saying, well, my dad used to beat my mom. His dad is, used to be a police officer. His dad used to, you know, he was... Um, one of those guys who was helping Rudy Giuliani in 95 bust these mobsters. So, you know, the FBI vetted this guy. Yeah. If he was going to be, uh, you know, if he actually beat people, I think the stuff would have came out when the NFBI, you know, interviewed him. They do psychological profiles. So for Joe to say that this guy beat him without actually ever meeting him, you know, they, I, again, I wasn't there to get Joe's size of the story. Yeah. I, I recommend that Joe reaches out to his own father and they can talk their own way privately. But. I just went out there be to get his side of uh, the story, his old man's. Yeah. And in all honesty, um, I'm petty too. So, I mean, <laughs> we're not going to lie about that. <laughs> I've seen you say that. And uh, by the way, I won the bet. What bet? The one I said I get on stage with Joe Rogan uh, for 10K. It cost me 5K to do it. Did you see, it? it takes money to make money. Capitalism. Wait, he kept the 5K? Yeah, he kept. No, Joe Rogan took the 5K, gave it, gave it to the crowd. But the person I made the bet with for 10K... I got it. Uh, so you no. see, I still made 5K. That's what I'm saying. Capitalism is beautiful. Yeah. Got to spend money to make money. Have you been able to use numerology to make money in sports betting and, and yes, gambling? Yes, I won $1.2 in May of 2021. The Resorts Casino. And I remember uh, how it happened. So it was like March. I'm down to like about 100K. Yeah. And I uh, went back to rebook my room. And they're like, oh, you're the guy who lost six figures. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Okay. So at that point, I got real steamed. Then I went on the best run in my life. Wow. I literally took these people for $1.2 in about three, three and a half weeks. And uh, afterwards, I'm trying to you know, re extend my stay. Yeah. They're like, no, you can't stay here anymore. <laughs> and then they went down with me and, and they told me, guess what? You can't um, make bets that pay you more than 10000 anymore. So they try to limit my bets. Yeah, yeah. At that point, they're forcing my ass out because I'm not going to deal with, deal with this. You know, I'm not trying to win a thousand dollars. I'm trying to go for someone's throat. Yeah. So, but you know, there's way bigger sports gamblers than me. Bet like you know, 10k a day or something like that. There's people who are betting 100, 250k a day. Yeah. So 
I'm, I might be at a you know very different level to the average person, but there's people out there who may put me to shame. Yeah, it's all relative. So when you were making those bets, what kind of numbers or patterns were you looking for? Uh, well, the exact things I'm looking for, I'm not going to reveal, but right. the fact of the matter is this. Uh, there's a lot of people on baseball teams with a lot of different birthdays. The teams were all founded on different dates. There's a lot of data there to go for. And unless people know the exact patterns, it can be very difficult for them to figure out the formula because there's a lot of cross and references. It's basically all reverse engineering, but you got to know what to look for. Wow. So there's basically teammates and their birthdays are indicative of if they're okay. I'll, I'll give you an example. Corey Bellinger. Yeah. Perfect example. You know who he is, right? Yeah, pitcher, okay. right? No, 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 no. Corey Bellinger used to, uh, was... Uh, born in 1995, the year of the pig. Mm -hmm. He hit his peak in 2019, the year of the pig. He was pretty much the best player in the game. After 2019, dude fell off. Mm. So when people are in their peak energy, they actually flourish. Example, Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. He's born 1992, the year of the monkey. He hit the final game-winning shot in Steph Curry's eyes in 2016, Game 7, the NBA Finals, to win his... First and only championship. Mm. He hasn't won one since, but he won one in his own year. Wow. People have to understand stuff like that happens. Even look at Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant and Westbrook born uh, 1988, year of the dragon. They made the NBA finals for the first time in 2012, the year of the dragon. They didn't win it, mm. but they actually made it to the finals that year. Uh, Jeremy Lin, remember him? Yeah, the Asian guy. Uh, do you remember Lin Sanity? Yeah. He's born 1988, the year of the dragon. He was the most popular uh, player in the NBA for at least two months. Lin Sanity. I remember that. In 2012, the wow. year of the dragon. Uh, let's go to John Jones. You know who John Jones yeah, is? UFC. John Jones, born 1987, year of the cat, wins his first UFC title. 2011, in the, year, in the year of the cat. Gets stripped of the title in 2017, his enemy year. And then again, this year, what happened? He's the champ again. Holy so again, this stuff works, and this is just the basic stuff that I'm willing to you know, put out there. This stuff goes very, very deep. Yes. Uh, and if people don't believe this, understand one thing. I don't care if you believe me. <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is this. This is what the elites use. This is what the elites use. This is what the people in positions of power. So I'm going to copy them, not what everyone else says. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Do you think Trump uses numerology? Um, yeah, uh, when he was in the White House, he would tweet law and order on four days. If you go back on his tweets, you'll see most of his uh, law and order tweets came on the 4th, the 13th, the 31st, 3 and 1 is Yvor, you get the math. Yeah. And yeah, I'm sure he was aware of that because he is him actually himself is a number four. So he was the law and order president to a point. Um, he was also very supportive of the U.S. military. Do you agree? Yeah, he was. Uh, he is born on the same exact day as the U.S. military was founded, wow. 6, 614. So again, it shows you correlations, not just between people, but also things. Yeah. Who do you think the next president will be? <sighs> you know, when it comes to the elite, they have plan A, they have plan B, plan C. I, I think uh, Michelle Obama is most likely, um, has the best chance at this point. She didn't even announce she's running yet, did she? Uh, uh, no, she didn't. But if you understand how it goes, how the media works, I think they're trying to see um, if JFK Jr. can get some steam. And if that falters, then go straight with Michelle Obama. Hmm. Um, here's what you have to understand about Biden. Biden was actually Obama's puppet for about two and a half years. What do you mean? Uh, well, basically, all of the people within the Biden administration, at least 80 percent of them are Obama's people from Janet Yellen to Mayor Garland, his attorney general. Mm -hmm. These are all Obama's people. They're loyal to Obama. Mm -hmm. When uh, Joe Biden wanted to fire, fire Janet Yellen, Obama called called him and said no. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are all facts. So what happened was there is a, a person named Susan Rice. Do you know who she is? No. Susan Rice used to be the national security advisor for Barack Obama. Okay. Uh, and she's very, very high up the totem pole. Barack trusts her totally. And she was in the Biden administration as a so-called advisor. So what would happen is she would go to Obama's office. He lives in a mansion about five miles away from the White House. Take orders from him in person because they're not stupid. They're not going to do what the Clintons did with emails. All that stuff can get hacked. Yeah. So they do it by word of mouth. So Susan Rice would go to the Biden uh, White House and tell everyone what Obama wanted done that day. And that's why they actually uh, stopped 
uh, giving the logs for the White House visitor logs. Under every president, there were the public could see him. Under the Biden administration, they stopped. That's so they couldn't ask why Susan Rice was at the White House every single day. Mm. Then something happened on uh, April 24th this year. Susan Rice resigned from the Biden administration. What that showed was Biden and Obama broke. And the next day, what did Biden do? He announced his candidacy for 2024. Wow. So the, the day after Susan Rice leaves, he announces his candidacy. So what basically happened, so people can understand, is Biden and Obama met once a week at the White House for about two and a half years. And Obama would go over there, tell Biden what to do, and he would pretty much do it. And uh, he basically told Biden, you got to step aside. We're going to have a new guy. He mm -hmm. didn't want that because Biden has to protect his son. Yeah. If, if he leaves the White House, who's going to protect Hunter? No one's going to protect Hunter. So he's like, this, he broke. He went to his vice president, uh, um, Kamala. Kamala, and Kamala's connected with the Clintons. So what happened was he ran to the Clintons for help from uh, the Obamas. Now, here's the problem. Obama controls the deep state. Obama controls the DNC. So that's why you've seen in the past four months a constant attack against Hunter Biden and uh, um, President uh, Biden from the media. And they're getting all this stuff from basically Team Obama. Wow. Now, what has also happened is in the media, it's leaked that uh, Barack Obama was writing his gay lover. Those memos have leaked in the past week. That's the Clintons using their media people to try to get back at Obama. Also, Obama's, uh, what was it? His uh, waiter, his, his uh, oh, got drowned, right? uh, kind of drowned at Martha's Vineyard. Bro, <laughs> I know people. Okay, that's like one of the most secure locations in the world okay you know the only people who can get there are people who are very very connected now that was obviously a message to obama i can only assume the clintons sent it but at this point listen the clintons can put a lot of people in the ground but they can't put obama in the ground obama beat him in 2008 he beat him in 2016 uh when he uh backed trump at the very end to make sure trump won uh do you remember in at Wait, the obama back trump no 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 Obama backed Trump at the very end without anyone even knowing it. Oh, really? Do you remember James Comey? James Comey, no. He was the FBI director. Okay. Uh, uh, two days before the election in 2016, he reopened the email investigation into Hillary Clinton. Clinton blamed him for losing. You think uh, some FBI director is going to cross the Clintons without having someone in his ear saying, yo, I got you? Yeah, yeah. That was Barack Obama. Wow. So Barack Obama wanted Trump in the White House. Why? Because as soon as Trump left, it was in the White House, he took over the DNC. Hmm. So all of a sudden, all Clinton's people are cleaned out of the National uh, Democratic National Committee, and Obama puts his own people in there. Wow. So Obama owns the deep state. He owns the DNC. And again, I don't think this is Obama doing himself. He's just a front man. People could say it's Valerie Jarrett, but I'm very interested in politics, as you can see. Obama's playing chess out here. Obama's out here playing chess, and no matter what you guys say about him, uh, he actually uses numerology and astrology as well. Wow. Barack what? Obama, 11 letters. Barack Obama, born 8 4 1961, 8 as up to 29, 2 and 9 is 11. He became president in 2009, 11. When does this stop be a coincidence, folks? When does this <laughs> stop? You know, that's why I always ask people, they're like, oh, you're cherry picking. Or the. I'm giving you information from the top people in the world. If you just want to switch over to. Um, Sports for a second. Michael Jordan, born 217, 1963. Mm -hmm. He uh, is an 11 life path. He mentored Kobe Bryant, born 823, 1978, mm -hmm. 38, 11. So we have an 11 mentoring an 11. And those two, when people compare who the best of all time, they might say LeBron is, but they always compare Kobe to Michael. Yeah, yeah. Always. And by the way, who did Kobe mentor? Kyrie Irving. Kyrie born 223, 1992. Year of an 11 life path. Again, 11 Michael, 11 Kobe, 11 Kyrie. Wow. It's all there. So when people say this is nonsense, do some research. People are lazy. They are. They yeah. don't want to think. For they sure. literally don't want to think. You're a 33 life path. I am. Do you have influence? Yes or no? I'd say so. 33 is the number of influence, man. That it, It's the essence around people born in that day. 
They have influence. I only got in this game about six months ago. I got about 600 million views in mm -hmm. six, seven months. Crazy. Because I wanted that to happen. I timed it correctly using numerology. I waited. You, it, I mean, people might have heard of me before, but they never you know, went down this road yeah. because I knew they wouldn't be interested in it in 2021, 2020, so you 2019. you waited until this year? Yes. I waited to this year. You waited years for yes. this? Yes. <laughs> I waited to this year to make it happen. <laughs> and obviously God. it worked. Yeah. What do you think? Andrew, take this and use this stuff? You think Tate uses it? I can guarantee he uses it. Andrew wow. Tate, he will tell you it's haram, but he's yeah, using it. He's super religious. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. He's religious when it's convenient for him to be religious. Uh, when it's convenient for him to be a Christian, he'll be a Christian. When it's convenient for him to be a Muslim, he'll be a Muslim. I, he's one of those guys. I saw but, it. He called you out, right? Of course. He can with him. But here's the point. He's a Tiger born 1986. He got world famous in 2022, the year of the Tiger. Hmm. Now, if that was only one thing, it wouldn't matter too much. But we got Mr. Beast too, don't we? Mr. Beast, found in 1998, the year of the Tiger, got a billion dollar valuation last year in the year of the Tiger. Mm. You know who Sneeko is, right? Yeah. Sneeko came on when? Last year. He went from pretty much being broke to having a bag. Yeah. He's Tiger, born 1998, in a Tiger year. And the last one, because I don't want to just say, oh, it's these influencers. I'm cherry picking. What about Tom Cruise? Factor. Tom Cruise, born 1986, year of the Tiger, got his first, excuse me, 1962, the year of the Tiger. He got his first bag in 1986 with Top Gun, mm. the year of the Tiger. It got a remake in 2022, the year of the Tiger, and he became, again, the highest paid actor in Hollywood last year. Damn. Tiger in a Tiger year. So at this point, how could people even say this is coincidence? I'm going from every single category you can go to. Yeah. That's nuts. How far does this stuff date back? I, I, again. When I debate people about this stuff, I'm doing it with two hands behind my back because mm -hmm. I'm gatekeeping. Yes. I'm only revealing so much information. So it's been around. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it, the thing is, it's pretty much always been a woman's game. What do you, you know, mean? Numerology and astrology, this is what chicks do. Hmm. And as soon as I started basically making it make sense by giving people historic precedences of how this stuff works, then all of a sudden people start, you know, getting a little bit more interested in how this works. Mm. You have to, yep. See, is is an influencer, if you're trying to do something, you can't say, oh, th these people are just too stupid to understand me. Mm -hmm. No, no, brother, it's on you. It's on you. It, it, if you want to prove for an example, like I did, numerology works, you got to get down to sports examples. If you want to prove that numerology works to the sports crowd, Give them the Michael Jordan example. If you want to say, oh, the political crowd, let's talk about this. Barack Obama's an 11. Ronald Reagan, the last big guy on the other side, mm -hmm. was an 11 life path. He had a cult-like following just like Obama. Mm. As a matter of fact, if you look at most of the people who are running for president in the, this decade, Sarah Palin born on the 11. John McCain born on the 29th. John Kerry born on the 11th. Mm. Come on, man. There's only so many of these guys. So you, you have to understand it's a pattern that people with 11 energy have charisma. Yeah. You know, um, when you look at a guy like Aiden Ross, the guy looks like a f moron to me. <laughs> but but he's got a, a lot of pull, doesn't he? He does. What what day is he born on? I don't know. Actually. 11. Oh, yeah. That's Joe Rogan born on the 11. So the guys with pull have certain birthdays in the podcast game. It's usually three numbers. It's usually 11s, threes, 33s. And fives. Mm. Those are usually the ones. The fives are the entertainers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure people have heard of Zerka this year. Yeah. He's a five, you know, he's a five, he, he's born on the 23rd, but he's also a three life path. So he has both of the energy. So it, all you have to do is look at the people around and you'll see uh, Rolo, Sartain, they're running their mouth here all the time. Yeah. They're both threes. Wow. You see how this stuff works? Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Crowder. Crowder, yeah. big guy. He's also a three life path. Mr. Beast is a three life pack. So a uh, uh, comedian, mm -hmm. comedy starts with C. C is the third letter. Who's some of the comedians out there? Chris Rock is a three. You know, when you look uh, down the list, you're going to see that the energy always fits the description. Mm. And that's how you know it's real when you start seeing it with your own eyes. That's wild. What year are you born in? 97. 97 is the year of the ox. When did you become a millionaire? Uh, a couple years ago. 2021? Yeah. 2021, the year of the ox. <laughs> That's crazy. This is how it works. That was yeah. the best year financially for me.
So Ever. your best year was under your own energy. Yeah, like by far. Like okay, uh, that girl Bobby, who's coming up, who might be a plant. Yeah, who just got an interview with Cuban and Drake. You saw what happened last night. Drake made her take down the interview. Ooh. Well, he still got the that. That's going to give you very even more publicity. Whatever. Yeah. But here's the point. She uh, started doing her podcast in 2021. Year of the Ox. Yeah. She's born in 97. See how it works. If you do things when you're supposed to, when your energy's basically compatible mm. you'll go a lot further that's why they always say timing is everything right yeah well if a numerology and astrology can time things out correctly yeah it's good to know so every 12 years right is when your year every 12 years back. um when it comes like for instance um when you look at um saddam hussein he's born in the year of the ox uh his enemy year is the goat mm. uh he took over a rock in a goat year uh, Rock used to be the crown jewel of the Middle East. Totally destroyed it. He mm. came to power in his enemy year. Joe Biden has not done a very good job as president of the United States. He's a horse. He came to power when? In 2020. Here are the rat, his enemy sign. And America's paying the consequences for that action right now. Because wow. if you have someone come to power in your enemy year, it's going to be you know very negative. Um, there's three guys who are pretty much very anti-crypto. Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett. Uh, I would say Joe Biden's been very anti-crypto. Would you agree? Yeah. And Patrick Bet David back in the day was probably the biggest influencer was running his mouth against crypto. Yeah. Agreed? I remember that. Okay. Yeah. All three of those guys. All three of them are born in the year of the horse. Bitcoin was founded in the rat year. Mm. Enemy signs. You see, they don't understand. They just hate something. They don't know why. Mm. They don't even get this part. And these guys are very successful. We're talking about billionaires and guys worth multi-millions. Yeah, yeah. But they still don't get this part. And that's why they fail. Wow. Do you believe in like past lives and reincarnation? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Of course, man. Like, for instance, you're 33. Yeah. I know you're an old soul. Why? Because you can't get to that level. You can't get that vibrational energy without going through all those other experiences. That's my problem with Islam. Islam... Uh, from the people who are major scholars, say reincarnation goes from the womb, then you you know you're a human, then you die, and that's what they call reincarnation. Yeah. Wrong. Not everyone in life has the same mission, but we all have to go through the same experience to actually evolve past this. Yeah. And 33 is the pinnacle. Think about it. Uh, Albert Einstein, 33 uh, life path, nuclear energy. Mm. Um, Thomas Edison. What do you do? Gave us electricity. Uh, Blight Bulb, uh, the Wright Brothers, First in Flight, me, numerology. This is what we do. We're the trailblazers. It's crazy you said old soul because I did past life therapy last week. I've had 700 lives. So you're right about that. It, how do you, like, for instance, put all ego aside, okay? How do you think you're here? How do you, how, how do you, exactly. But if you only lived once, how do you have that experience? Right. So obviously that's my issue with Islam. By the way, I agree with most of the tenets of Islam. Yeah. Don't eat pork, don't drink haram. But there's certain things that I will question because as a numerologist, I know reincarnation is real. Right. I know it. So as you earn the right to be a 33, you've been reincarnated so many times. You went through so many life missions and you passed so many through the one through nine, through the 11, through the 22. Mm -hmm. And now you're a 33 and you have the ability to influence others. Yeah. You earn the right, no matter how young you are. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Wow. Wait, why don't you eat pork, though? That's my enemy, son. Oh. But I don't think humans should eat pork anyway. It's not the best for you, right? No. <laughs> I mean, listen, don't drink either. Whether you believe in um, spirits or anything like that, I do think when people drink alcohol, they do have the ability to be possessed. Mm. That's why they call it spirits. Wow. That's creepy. What about colors and shapes? You think those have 100%. some meaning? 100%. Yeah. Lady in red, brother. Lady, Lady in, red. in red. Like, for, for instance, when Donald Trump was campaigning, you'll notice whenever he wears a red tie, whoo, he's hitting people hard. <laughs> he's going after people. Where he's winning a blue tie, more composed. Mm. So he, 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 red is more about aggressive energy. Mm. Red is about energy. That's why you have the Lady in red in the Matrix. It's all about things of that nature. But blue is more of a trust me color. Mm. So when, you know, the president of the United States is doing this, go back in his speeches. Look at him. You'll see it yourself. Wow. Never even thought about that. So everything's like subconscious almost. 
Um, everything has vibrational energy, would you realize or not? The colors, the shapes, everything. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about numerology and astrology because numerology is the number one source code for matrix hack. Mm. There's others. You know, if you have moles in certain places that tells you about how someone is, if, um, you know, you have a certain shape of your face mm -hmm. but you know, those things are very hard to teach yeah the numerology you can actually use examples and people can see with their own eyes because that's what has to happen people have to see it with their own eyes to believe it yeah i've seen you talk on social media that your consciousness can be controlled from music and sound 100 percent um if you have a negative vibration going into you all the time that's going to affect you from a health level, from all this other stuff. Mm. So uh, again, you know, people can lift all the weights they want, but if they're listening to negative music, if they're doing negative things, sleeping around with a whole bunch of women, mm. uh, women doing the same, that's, you know, not a good thing. Uh, you know, they're, they're now nah, we, we'll, we'll leave that one alone. <laughs> I, it, this, we'll, 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 we'll make sure this is YouTube. <laughs> no, I, I feel that though, because I've gone through times where I listen to like depressing music and it definitely affects your life. Yeah. Um, I believe that people on top pump out that music on purpose. Listen to all the music women listen to, like Destiny's Child, all this. It's all about getting rid of your men. Yeah. Uh, this dude cheating on me. Yo, girl, you can do better than him. Hmm. And, they, and they pump that stuff in at a certain frequency. Hmm. So women actually start believing that stuff and they're out. And by that way, they destroy families and society. Mm. These people want to destroy the family unit. The most important thing is to destroy the family unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed that. Gary, it's been fun, man. What do you want to close off with? Men lie, women lie, numbers never lie. <laughs> Classic. Thanks for coming on, brother. Yes, sir, brother. All right. See you guys next time. Peace.